Hail, hail, the Celts are here, and what the hell do we care now? The Celts are back in the transfer market, going round the far reaches of European football, looking to uncover the next gem, the next wonder kid that can put on the green and white hoops and make a name for themselves. And we went back to the promised ground, we went back to Sweden again to sign another super Swede to come into Celtic. And the man who broke the story, the man we've got joining us today to tell us everything we need to know about Gustav Lager. Belke, if I can say that, is Anel Avdic from Expressen over in Sweden. Anel, good to join. Uh, good to see you, mate. Thanks for joining us on the channel. And hail, hail! Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm, uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be fun to uh, speak a little bit about uh, the transfer story and uh, about uh, Gustav Lager Belke. So, uh, uh, thanks for having me. You know, excellent. And thanks very much for saying his name right at the beginning, because we're all going to clip that now and just yeah. have it on repeat until we've, uh, <laughs> until we've got that muscle memory and we can just say it off the tongue, no problem at all. Uh, th th this is a name, Anel, if you don't mind me getting straight into it, that I was unfamiliar with. This is a totally, this is a player that I've, I know nothing about. I had no kind of preconceived ideas that we were in the market for had, or, or anything like that. A lot of Celtic fans around the world, the first thing they do when a player like this comes to Celtic or is very close to is they jump into all the football app things on your phone. We're looking at statistics. We're trying to find highlight packages. Um, from someone that's seen him, Gustav, uh, up close and personal, Anil, what can you tell Celtic fans that they're not going to see from statistics about the big man? Uh, Gustav is a centre-back who excels uh, uh, in uh, aerial play and is uh, very skilled with the ball at his feet. Uh, he po po he possess uh, a sharp uh, di distribution ability. Uh, last year he had a standout season uh, while on uh, loan at uh, Degerfors in uh, Sweden. Uh, and uh, his past 12 months in Ellsborg have been highly su su uh, successful. Uh, so, uh, if, if you ask me, uh, he has been uh, one of the best players for Elsborg this season, who is, the, uh, who is at the first place in uh, Allsvenskan. So, he's very uh, like strong uh, in the, uh, with, with the ball on, on his feet and uh, I, he's good at uh, like... Uh, 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 reading the the the, the game uh, and uh, many people in Sweden uh, thinks that he's probably a, a, a national team prospect. So uh, I think uh, with his age, uh, with his uh, uh, what do you say, uh, with his um, ab Potential. abilities on the field, I think he can uh, fill the pocket. Uh, when Starfelt leaves uh, for Celta Vigo. Yeah, so it's it's a swift Swede in, Swede out. Carl Starfelt looks to be going to Celta Vigo uh, over where Rafa Benitez in Spain. And uh, you know, part of the thing that came out that I was reading yesterday was that Starfelt's agent played a bit of a role in perhaps making this move happen so quickly. And the, the speed of the move is definitely one thing, Anel, that I see a lot of Celtic fans were caught off by. In Sweden, I know you were saying locally um, there's a lot of um, hype around this guy. A lot of people think he can play for the national team. Um, but like I mentioned, I didn't see this guy getting linked to Celtic or really anyone else beforehand. Was there, you know, you know was there other clubs kind of rumoured they're interested in him? Normally I see Scandinavian players move to like Belgium and Holland, maybe yeah. Germany, Bundesliga two, these kind of places. So was there, you know, do you think there was a lot of competition for the signature or has Celtic been in there really quickly? Yeah, it it, it it has been a lot of uh, uh, a lot of rumors in the last couple of weeks. Uh, I think uh, Belgium, uh, uh, Royal Antwerpen, and also Ajax has been in Sweden to uh, scout him, and uh, and I, I I know that they have shown some 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 interest. But right now, uh, Celtic is um, is pushing, and uh, they have uh, uh, they uh, made a big bid uh, three millions of pounds uh, that's uh, approximately 40 millions of Swedish crowns so if Elsborg decides to sell him he will be the the most the most expensive sales uh, for the for the for the for the club so uh, it's big money uh, and uh, uh, I, I I I know that uh, many clubs have been uh, in Sweden to to 
to scout him. So, um, yeah, yeah, he's been a hot topic on the transfer market here in Sweden. Oh, really? Well, that's very promising to hear because Starfell and Carter Vickers last year in El didn't lose a game domestically in the league. So it was a really powerful part of the defence. It wasn't everyone's cup of tea in Glasgow, to be honest. Some people were a fan, some people weren't. But they had an amazing partnership and a great record. We've signed a Polish uh, player recently as well, Navroche. And I know a lot of Celtic fans will be looking at this transfer and thinking, is this a guy that's going to be pushing for the first team? Or is this a guy that's just coming in to still kind of maybe hone his ability, maybe let, you know slowly level up over the next year or two before we could see him make a real impact. How do you read the situation? Do you think he's going to come in and want to get in the team quickly and realistically that's something he could do? I think that his ambition is to play uh, immediately and uh, he uh, this January he was in the uh, Sweden's uh, young national team uh, U21, you know. So uh, he 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 start he's uh, he plays regularly for for Ellsborg and I think he can adapt uh, to Scottish football and like I know it's it's a lot of pressure in a big club like uh, like Celtic but uh, I think from what I've seen here in Sweden uh, he's a strong character maybe he needs some time to like adapt to the system to to uh, fit 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 in the club but i think if you give him time uh, he can adapt fa- uh, like fast and i think uh, that he can uh, he can be a good signing uh, he's 23 years old so i think like he he's mature to 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 play uh, and uh, he he fight for the for the for the, for the title here in 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 uh, sweden so i think uh, this is a how do you say it in in english uh, this is a a big step but i think he's ready for it that's very interesting because we as you maybe know at celtic have explored the the japanese and the korean market quite a lot over the last year or so and part of the problem we've had with signing those players is when their domestic season runs sometimes we're catching them at the end of a big season we're signing them in january uh, whereas when we've, we, we go to Scandinavia, generally we're picking guys up after they've started the season, they've had the pre-season campaign under their belt already, and they are match fit, they're kind of ticking over already. Um, one of the questions I've got prepared for the podcast today is, like, locally, you know, how are the fans feeling about this? Because Elfsborg and, you know, is it El- it's Elfsborg is at the now, isn't it? You know, they're doing pretty well in the league this year, and if he has the big command and centre-back in the team, is there is there any kind of worries from, from the team we're taking him from that it might be they've sold their season in essence or yeah it's a balance i mean uh, the upside uh, for elsborg is definitely the money uh, it, it's a big bid uh, 40 millions of crowns uh, and elsborg's uh, sporting director uh, spoke earlier today and he said that if we sell uh, if we decide to sell lager bielke with we still have uh, three good centre backs in the squad, and they have also, I think, 15 days to maybe find a replacement. So it's a balance, uh, but uh, I think that they are strongly considered to sell. Uh, and uh, let's see if um, if the club can final uh, finalize the the the, the deal. Uh, Celtic is pushing. They uh, they think that he's the man to replace Starfelt, and uh, now it's up to to Elspor to de- to decide if they are uh, prepared to uh, cash in or keep the player to maybe fight for the the title here uh, here in Sweden. But I know like it's very much money on the table, so um, I think that that will play a big part in in uh, in the ne- negotiation. Yeah. And, you know, like I mentioned in the intro, Anel, you're a, a sports journalist over from Sweden that, that broke the news. If anyone wants to follow Anel for any more kind of breaking news out of that part of the world, it's Anel Avdic at on Twitter, just as it's shown on screen, all one word. From your understanding of it, Anel, is this deal like super close to happening or is it just that we're getting excited and jumping the gun thinking... It's closer no, than what no. It is. Uh, the the deal is on a the the talks 
the the talks between the clubs is on a uh, is on a advanced uh, uh, stage. Yeah, yeah. So uh, they are negotiating. Uh, they have uh, made a bid, and uh, now just now the the last thing I heard was that. Uh, Ellsborg has to decide uh, if they want to sell or not. So uh, I think uh, we will we will uh, get an answer maybe in a cup, cup, couple of days or maybe a week, I think. But uh, as I wrote in the article, uh, the bid is at, at the table, three millions of pounds, and. Uh, uh, the, the 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 talk the the talks b- between the clubs is on a, a, a advanced uh, stage. So uh, let's see uh, what happens. Excellent. And I think like you did a great job of explaining a bit about the man's profile earlier on. You know how he's developed the sort of defender he is at Celtic. So now there's a real push for the defenders to be passing the ball out from the back quite a lot. But one thing that is really missing in the defence now is an kind of aerial presence. The Polish defender we've signed is much taller than Starfield and uh, Carter Vickers. And it does seem like this guy has a bit of that aerial prowess. But is he... So what, what I would like to maybe get an insight on, Anil, is does La- does Lagerbielke, is he, is he able to play in that progressive kind of build-out from the back style? And is his aerial abilities as good as the statistics make him look? Yeah, yeah, he's uh, he's progressing at the right pace and uh, direction. And uh, my opinion is that he has qualities with the ball and in the uh, like aerial uh, play. So I think he can combine those two and uh, and uh, uh, yeah, and uh, fit 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 into Celtic's uh, style of play. So. I don't see any problems uh, uh, at yeah at that point. Yeah, no, fair enough. The the last question I would ask you on that, if you don't mind, is uh, do you do you know if, if it, is he right footed? Is he left footed? Does he have a preferred side of the defence to play on where he's strongest? Uh, I think uh, I think he can play as a right. Uh, I think he can play as a right centre back or, or or a left centre back. So I don't see any problems there. He's um, he's flexible. Uh, and and he has he has played in the both roles uh, in the both roles in uh, in uh, in Ellsborg. So uh, uh, yeah, uh, he he's he's flexible and uh, he's a very good player. Yeah, I think the only kind of Celtic story I, I know of Elfsborg, we played Elfsborg a few years ago in the Champions yeah. League qualifiers. You, you probably remember, yeah. and you may you guys might not know this right, but at the time. We just signed a guy by the name of Bangura. Yeah. And at the time, Elfsborg had signed somebody by the name of Bangura as well. And our Bangura was really rubbish. And I think your Bangura was at least a little bit okay. And the yeah. joke was in Glasgow for about a year, like, you know, Elfsborg signed the right Bangura and we got the wrong one. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, but, you he, know, we've had a lot of internet. Oh, on you go. No, he, he, Bam- Bangura was a good player in uh, Sweden for a couple of years, so uh, I don't know what happened in <laughs> in uh, Scotland uh, and Celtic. So, yeah, definitely wasn't the same Bangura. I'll tell you that. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no obviously. <laughs> But the Celtic family is always really happy to, you know, like welcome back in, you know, uh, you know, players from all reaches of the world. Like I've mentioned a few times on the show, we've been going back into that Asian market repeatedly. And we're starting to hear from the players and from the fans a much kind of stronger connection to the whole kind of Celtic pathway, if you like. You know, we've got young Japanese players uh, given memories of watching like Nakamura in the Champions League and, you know, other kind of things like that over the years. Celtic's a relationship with with Swedish players and the Swedish national team players in particular is 20, 25 years strong at this point with Magnus Hedman, Johan Malby, Henrik Larsson, Mikael Lustig, John Gadetti and everything in between. So, yeah. you know, like, from the fans' perspective, when Celtic do come in and pick up like uh, a Lager BLK like this, you know, what is the kind of perspective on that? Do people see that, oh, wow, he's going to go, and sell- he's going to, go to Celtic and that's like really good for Swedish players or is it does it not really come on the radar no, I I think here here in Sweden, when a player moves to to Celtic, it's always uh, big and uh, respected. Uh, so uh, 
no no problem at 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 all and i think uh general swedish players fit in uh that kind of football in england in uh, scottish premier league so so i think it's a it, it's a good step for every swedish player and uh, like if you do really good at uh at um, celtic you can uh, maybe one day take next step to to uh, to to a bigger league in uh, yeah in france italy uh, england or something like that so it's always a good move it's always uh, respected and um, sweden uh, as you say uh, many players from sweden has uh, played in uh, in celtic and uh, they have done really really like nice things there so uh, uh, let's hope that uh, Gustav Lagerbjelke also uh, will uh, go at the same path as, uh, as the other Swedish players has done in Celtic um, and I'm going to try and squeeze uh, some info out you Anel before I let yeah. you get back to it okay I've seen cool. some very loose tentative links for Celtic to go after Gabriel Gudmundsson the Swedish left back that's currently at Lille what do yeah. you think? Uh, he's also a very good player. Uh, I wrote a story about Gabriel uh, Gudmundsson in July. Uh, and uh, according to my information at that point, uh, the clubs that was uh, interested was uh, Mainz, Frankfurt, Torino and Bologna in Italy. So I haven't heard anything about Celtic, but uh, look, uh, he's a good player, uh, and uh, I think that Celtic uh, is a good step for 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 him too. So maybe you guys got two uh, got two Swedish players uh, this transfer window, uh, but uh, yeah, let, let's see what happens. Uh, it's silly season. That's it. Anel, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks very much for taking time out your busy schedule yeah. to, to come and educate us on Gustav Lagerbjelke, particularly on how to say his name. It's been an absolute pleasure. And once again, for everyone that has watched this, if you want to catch Anel on Twitter to catch up with the latest transfers and developments from that part of the world, it's as it's spelled on screen, Anel Avdic, all one word, and it's at, obviously, for Twitter. Uh, Anel, Thank you. it's been an absolute pleasure, mate. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, and a uh, big good luck for this season. Hail, hail.